Hi everybody, welcome back to Bobby's Bucks and today it's 10 days away from the opener of bow season here in Michigan and I want to talk about how you can shoot bigger bucks consistently in a high pressure state. Every state has a number, a certain number of hunters, and then there's a certain number of square miles. States like New York, uh, West Virginia, uh, Pennsylvania, you know, these states are high pressured states where deer see a lot of hunters. You know, states like Kansas and Iowa, uh, you know, some of these states, it's crazy how different hunting pressure deer is. And if you're a Michigander or if you're somebody who lives in these states and kills, you know, 100 inch deer consistently, you are an excellent deer hunter. I have people that I've met that have, you know, sit in their stands too late. They, uh, you know, are shooting deer in the dark using their scope. Um, they're shooting more than they should on their, their land. I know somebody who uh, has 30 acres. He's got 30 bucks on the wall, but he's only been hunting, uh, you know, 10 years. So, you know, that kind of stuff I don't condone. And really when it comes down to it, can you shoot these deer within the rules, you know, ethically? Because that is impressive. I'm impressed by that. I'm not impressed by the guy who's poaching deer. The point is, let's get good at doing this right. Obviously you only can hunt during the season, but when you're done, Hunting season never gets over for that hunter that has taken their game to the next level because that's when the postseason scouting kicks in, okay? That's when you have to see new land, find new spots. I believe the best thing you can do is learn how to hunt pressured deer. That's the hardest deer to kill. You know, when you're killing a three-year-old or older in those states, a hundred inch deer on the wall, in Michigan, that's good. You know, you look at that state, look at the Pope and Young numbers for that, it's different everywhere. In September, you should be working on your shooting. You know, basically getting all your gear, double checking all your gear, making sure your batteries are ready and all your gear is scent free. It's been treated and sealed and you're, you're ready. You've double checked because there's gonna be time for shipping and that's what September is about. Just practicing your bow, making sure it's all tuned in and you're ready to go. You're ready to hunt. All your equipment's good, equipment check. Because my scouting has been done for months. All my food plots have been planted and they're growing since August. So I'll do some overseeding, but it, you're always hunting and, and working on a schedule. In September, what you should be doing, if you are scouting, hopefully you're not, but if you have to, you know, sometimes you, it is what it is. And people do out of state hunts too. You know, maybe some seasons are opening early in other states. I don't do a lot of early season scouting anymore. I'm glad I call it postseason scouting. I call it the mosquito free, poison ivy free season. That's the best time to go out there and, and do your habitat and dial in your stands and your shooting lanes. Uh, you can really make big shooting lanes and then you'll just have to come back, you know, the following year and maybe, maybe clip a couple. Because September, this is the problem. A lot of people are brush hogging their way to their stands. They're shooting way too, or they're clipping way too many shooting lanes. And it doesn't take long for a mature deer to come through. They're gonna smell all that. They're gonna see all that. And they're gonna, they're gonna get out of there. They're only gonna come through there at night. It's, it's really important that you try to do that scouting and that stuff before September. Don't pressure your stands or your properties and allow the deer to get used to, to going through the property, frequenting the area, and that, that will pattern them to your property. After the first week of September, the deer have shed their velvet and maybe you'll get some cold nights and you'll start seeing bucks on your trail cameras finally. You're not just seeing does. And you know, those are heartbreakers because you'll see these bucks, you'll get all excited and then they're gone come opening day. The problem is most cases folks are out there uh, fiddle farting around, playing with their tree stand, their property, running their quads and walking around. And that, that's the thing, it's a double-edged sword. You can fix it up, but you gotta let it rest. You gotta stay off of it. So I know you love the property, but you're gonna have to hike somewhere else. Go play somewhere else. The deer are gonna be rubbing more. And 
if you have a good watering hole or maybe some fruit or, or a good feeding area that has a lot of security, you may even see some early scrapes. A great thing to do with your trail cameras is hang them on watering holes and hang them on uh, apple trees if you can find them uh, far away from the parking areas. Either go in there on a rain and pull your card, pull the whole camera if you can. Right about now, I like to go in there and pull my cameras and look at the intel. I remove them, I apply no more pressure to the property. This is a good thing to do because those bucks that are coming around, they don't start getting wise because the trail cameras, even the no glows, have a sound, have a, have a slight glow to them, even the no glows. Those, those babies used to really shine. Now the no glows just kind of have this like little tiny indicator. And a big mistake people make is they're getting nighttime shots that really spook deer. They really educate deer that, that people are there. People will be there. Deer actually remember. Set your trail cameras to only take day pictures. You should be able to get into your trail camera and pick the time. Start the time when the sun comes up and end the time when the sun goes down. So right now, daytime pictures are right about from seven o'clock to eight o'clock. Now this is, these are my daytime pictures. So that's the operating time for my trail cameras. You can go to your properties if you have places where you can see from the, the field, you can hang your stands um, and you can observe and you can hike and you can spot, you can, you can pick spots where you can, they're called observation stands or lookout stands. And you know, everybody calls them something different, but basically what you're doing is you're, you're scouting and you're waiting to see a buck in the distance if you can see. Pick these spots where you can really see far. Good observation stands will tell you so much. Take notes. I like to use my phone and I'll put all that information in my phone. I'll keep a file, I'll date it. I'll, I'll say where the deer came out, how long they hung out, where they left, um, you know, what the wind was, what the weather was. And all that information is important because in many cases, the deer will do the same thing with, under the same conditions. Another big mistake that I see folks doing is walking around and not spraying in their boots, there's a, just a super nose and a whitetail has it. And it's tough to completely fool it. But if you can at least maybe trick the deer into thinking that you weren't just there, it can't really figure out when you were there. Anything you can do to educate that deer less of your presence is good. And, and spraying your boots down is step one. Two is when you see deer or when you see a lot of sign, don't go in there and start cutting limbs and walking all around and, and checking scrapes and touching rubs. And that's a big mistake. Stay out of there. Set up southeast side of that sign. In most cases, you're gonna have a northwest wind. Figure out the prevailing wind in your area and set up downwind. Try to plan for that. You know, you can't always expect to have the right wind. So you're gonna have several different spots for different winds. So be sure to have a plan. Have a plan B, plan C, D, even E, because you want all directions of wind, plans for every single scenario, if it's cold, if it's hot, uh, if it's rainy, you know, if it's hot, you want a watering hole. If it's rainy, you may want a spot where, uh, you, you know, you have a, a roof over you. Maybe you can go to that favorite apple tree stand that you got. Whatever you do, don't make the big mistake of going into your favorite stand, your best stand on opening day and shooting a doe. When you have an opportunity to shoot a good buck, maybe even your target buck, the first few days of the season. Why is that? Because the deer haven't been pressured yet. They're still in their natural state. They're just getting wise to all the scent and all the intrusion by all the hunters coming in for, for bow hunting. Now, a lot of those guys are gonna come in, they're gonna shoot a doe, they're not gonna come back. Uh, maybe they'll come back for opening day. There's a lot of hunters like that. There's a lot of recreational hunters that don't take this as seriously as me or you. And you know that's why you're watching this video because you're a passionate deer hunter and you wanna up your game. Well, I can totally help you do that. Please be sure to comment on this video. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll send a video your way or I'll even make a video for you. You can always get in touch with me, bobby at therabbitrycenter.com. We also run a rabbitry. We have another channel, The Rabbitry Center, where we specialize in uh, helping folks raise their own rabbit meat. This is a white meat, all natural meat that you raise in your backyard. We hunt deer on our property 
and we raise rabbits on our property. Red meat and a white meat. And it's all natural. No hazardous chemicals or additives or preservatives. So be sure to let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, comment on the video. It goes right to me. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for taking the time to write your comment. And we'll see you on the next video.